Welcome back to the second game of the Skate Around Tournament, fifth edition, edition <laughs> in <laughs> Namur, Belgium, hosted by Namur Roller Derby. I am here today with Toxic. Lady. Toxic Lady. Hey, huh? Dark Pistol. How are yeah, you? I am Dark Pistol. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm okay. I mean, I did just speak another game, and so apparently yeah. my lips need to warm back up. Oh, okay. Well, but that's do okay. what you need to do. <laughs> <laughs> How about we go through those rosters really quick for yes, this particular so game? Yes, we, uh, we do have in black Rolo de Madrid, we, the number 112 Colerica Sara, 33 Little Cat, 517 Iron Diddle, 52 Bambi Killer, who's the captain, 61 Ira de Odin, 666 Tank Girl, 67 Mercury. 7-1 Garrider, 8-1 Angie, 8-6 Hawaii, 8-7-7 Mariquita, 8-8 Nenazza, 9-1 Fleur du Mal, 9-2 Dame Veneno, and 9-9-7 Paula. Fleur du Mal, I have a suspicion that may be a French name. <laughs> and then for Vienna Roller Derby, we have number zero, Fox Given, 111, Always Ultra, 115, Panty Breaker, 19, Anction, 24, ORG or Org. 247 Bella Ciao, 313 three, Pixie Fox, 404 four, Fiat Punto, 431 Syntax, 591 Fisbee, 611 Sabotage, 616 Vanderstorm, 8 Torremoto, 82 November Pain, 83 Chuck Nora. We're about to start the first jam. Toxic Lady, take us away. Oh, I'm trying to see who is jamming, but the position doesn't allow me to read the numbers. But the uh, Vienna, the Madrid, no, no, the Vienna team just came um, all, all of them together. They did not stay on the track before. So here we are for the second game of the uh, this first day of this tournament in Madrid. In, uh, in <laughs> Madrid. <laughs> we, I wish we were in Madrid because it's actually very cool here in Namur. So we have Nenadza uh, jamming for uh, Madrid and Flisby uh, jamming uh, for uh, Vienna, if I'm not mistaken. Am I mistaken? You do not know either. I don't we don't know, need I'm two blockers the in the penalty box in the first 30 seconds. That is a nice open for this game. Uh, with the lead being taken uh, by Vienna, even though the black jammer is in front. Uh, or do we have a lead? It all happened so fast. I didn't see if there yeah. was any lead being taken on this yeah, jam. Yeah, it looks like do we do have lead by Vienna Roller Derby. Fizz B is um, our lead jammer and is currently scoring points. So they're going in for their scoring jam. Wa uh, for their scoring pass, sorry, yeah. while the Madrid jammer is still blocked there behind that orange wall. Um, they look pretty organized. It looks like it's uh, going to be a bit difficult for this Madrid jammer number 8-8 eight, eight, to make it back through. So that's Nenaza. But Nenaza does eventually get through and get their points. Well, we have a lot of penalties being whistled during this first jam already. The fourth uh, uh, Blockers being sent to the penalty box. Three for Madrid and one for Vienna. 12 points for the orange team and four for the black team for Madrid. In just the first jam. So this already looks like it's going to be quite exciting. We're going to see if we're going to get a back and forth between the two of them. So now I'm going to start off jam number two. There's a bit of screaming. It's because the pivot is in the box and we had a pivot for Vienna on the track. We've got our two jammers taking it away. That would be um, Diana Woko. Sorry, da Dame Veneno, Dama Veneno for Madrid and Pixie who, Fox for Vienna. Number 9-2, who is now lead. Number 3-1-3, Pixie Fox, who is out right behind them. They're chasing. Let's see who makes it into the pack first. We've got the black pivot going to the box at the same time. The Madrid jammer blasts through the pack, calls it off as soon as they can, and are able to make that a 4-0 jam. We like those 4-0 jams because that is a very definitive way to do math. We don't have to work too hard. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, speak for yourself because for me it's still difficult. It's really not my forte, but I'm glad that you are going to take the lead on this one. <laughs> I like counting by fours. <laughs> Ever since we went from fives to fours, I, I just learned to count by fours. Okay. I like by fives. It's, it's way easier for my brain. 
so who do we have here? We have November Payne jamming for Vienna and Paula jamming for Madrid with uh, High Block being a whistle to um, Vienna blocker while the Madrid jammer number 997 takes the lead on this third jam already. And it looks like um, up there the Vienna pivot is definitely trying to guide the rest of their team, being the communicator and probably the one who uh, gets everybody together in a wall. Unfortunately, that happened a little too late, so they did take the jammer in the chest. Number 997, Paola, going in for another scoring pass. Let's see if they call it or what will happen. I see their bench seems to be saying something. <laughs> I don't want to give it know. away. We're going to see what happens <laughs> when it happens. I also don't like to say whenever a jammer is not looking in their bench and not paying attention to them and you're like, why aren't they calling it? The bench is jumping up and down. Doesn't matter. We do have another Vienna blocker in the box. So far, it seems like Vienna maybe has to get used to the officiating today. What do you think? I think the Madrid also had to uh, get used to the officiating because both teams had lots of blockers being sent to the penalty box, maybe with uh, you know, the tripods trying to be a bit hectic also, they have to get used to the floor, which is a really weird floor. I don't know if you've skated on this one. I no. tried it out last Wednesday, and it's a tricky floor. Um, 997, Paola comes through for another scoring pass. This is not a power jam, folks. This is just the Madrid wall holding the opposing jammer back. I don't know if you saw number 616, Van der Storm, really powerfully hitting the jammer out over and over again. Seems to be really good at recycling them. Yeah, and she's scoring already 20 points on this jam. Quite impressive. And taking the uh, lead as well. I'm, I'm, I haven't that spoken English in a, in a while. so it's how okay. We have to get it warmed up. I was also <laughs> speaking French between, and so that's why I think my English wasn't working out. But yeah. So we had a really high scoring jam there. That was 24 point jam for Madrid. That's uh, rare. It's very amazing. It is, it is. On very early on in this game. And you know, they are taking the leader with 32 points and 15 for Vienna with a very swift change of um, the the Vienna walls that took lead next to the pivot line. Wow, the, the, the Madrid jammer is really forcing their way through. It is Nananza who took the lead just after the first uh, turn. With also the Vienna jammer following quite through. We have a very hectic pack over there. I with lots of individuals. I didn't see any tripods, uh, but it seemed to be efficient enough. And we have three additional points being scored by Madrid on this jam. So if we look at that, we have a 35 to 15 game. As I said before, at the beginning, it was, um, a, it was a one jam, just super great for uh, Vienna. And now it looks like we're going to be evening that out. So I hope it, it's going to be a little bit closer. Uh, we now have our uh, next jam rolling to a start. Blockers are in each other's faces while number 9-2, um, Dam Veneno, I uh, think that's the first time we're seeing this jammer jam, gets through for a lead while number 591 from Vienna Fisby comes through behind them. But that doesn't stop Dam Veneno from pushing through the wall really quickly and scoring four points and calling it right off, right as they slam into the ground. I like the on the ground call offs, they're kind of cute. Yeah. Now I'm looking and it looks like, no, they did not score points on that. So that was in fact a zero zero jam, even with all of the effort that was made by Dam Veneno. And it was very impressive. No more people in the penalty box to open the six jam again. We have a very, very strong uh, attack from the jammers with the Vienna jammer. Uh, Pixie Fox taking the lead. Um, is that? And coming that through under the arms of their opponents. Meanwhile, we have a number 997 Paula who is still trying to make it through those Vienna blockers, well organized, able to pull back the jammer, what we call a recycle, although it's not as green as it sounds. <laughs> it does and nothing for the planet. No, and it, we have to uh, underline the fact that it's only the second time that the Vienna team took the lead on, um, on this game. They did the first jump. It's 
the second one, and they surely want to make the most out of it. They look at 431 Syntax doing some awesome um, work trying to get their jammer through doing that offense. You can see them standing back there. They are the pivot, so they are going to do their best to make sure that they can get their jammer out. Unfortunately, they also have to be careful that they provide a bridge at the front so that the Madrid jammer has to fight through one blocker, then one blocker, and then they're out. Another four points for them. And very good actions on the Madrid blockers, number 997 and uh, 877, who were really recycling and keeping the Vienna, and still keeping the Vienna jammer at the end of and the I don't pack. Know, I don't know why we missed it, but a 997 is a jammer and was doing some excellent blocking there, but they actually passed the star, so that was the pivot. Going oh, through and actually were. doing we a do great job getting more points for Madrid on that jam than the Vienna um, jammer did, and that eight to seven, I think that is a testament to how good that pivot is, because as a pivot myself. I don't always play pivot. <laughs> when I do, I don't score points. <laughs> but it's always a bit different now, when you're jamming against different blockers, different, mm -hmm. you know, different tactics, different strategies. Sometimes you can be a really good jammer against certain walls, but quite inefficient against other, other ones. And so it's good to adjust and know what's the best, mm -hmm. you know, person for the job according to the situation. Yeah. So now we have number 666 from Madrid that is Tank Girl, which is one of my favorite movies from the 90s. Ask me about it later. Who has made it lead and has also is also through on their scoring pass currently. I can't tell you how many points they've scored at this time, but I'm sure somebody will tell us eventually. Look at that jammer ref with their hands in the air once the jammer gets out. <laughs> and uh, number 82, who is uh, the Vienna jammer November Payne, who has one of their main jammers, who finally makes it out. And the score differential there is another 4-0. Again, I really like the 4-0s. I feel like you get your points, you make sure that the other jammer gets zero points, and you leave. Yeah, and it means also that you know you are you are scoring some points, but uh, it is a close call. You really have to be mindful and careful of uh, you have the lead certainly, but that means that you know, the other jammer is close by, and you want to make sure that you do not allow them any possibility of scoring any more. Yeah, break their souls a bit. And there we've got some again number four two that wonderful pivot. Or I'm sorry, not four two. It's number four three one. Their armbands are not very legible, but I'm not. I'm going to let the uh, officials worry about that. Who's doing some awesome offense for and their have, jammer number one nine? And we have uh, the number. Yeah, one nine. I was about to say that's the, their first time uh, jamming. No, Inktian did one other jam earlier. Ah yeah. uh, yes, I didn't see. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that. Unfortunately, it's the kind of thing I'm watching out for. Don't worry, you can always ask me. <laughs> but I we will. do have somebody who is following the stats next to us as we are not necessarily paying that much attention. We do know that number 88 is lead. We also are looking here right in front of our eyes, number 19 who danced around the outside <laughs> line to get through only to be slammed to the ground by the Madrid wall. <laughs> and they were really trying to keep their their skates inside the and track. They were doing a great <laughs> job. That dancing on that line was beautiful. It's nice to have it right in front of you. So the score on that particular gym was four to three. Again, getting closer. It really looks like they're starting to figure each other out. And um, I'm sorry, on that last gym, that was Vienna who was lead, but Madrid outscored them. Yeah. So we're going to see quite a fight in this particular game, I think, there. And well we can matched. already see that just everybody, you know, fighting for the jammer line with the number 9-2 uh, from Veneno. Madrid, Dame Veneno, who takes the lead quite fast. Oh, and now we have a horse race because we do have number 591 from Vienna coming into the back and scoring points, but not before ah. the Madrid jammer, who is also lead jammer, goes to the ground after their apex jump, because they did their apex jump in a naughty way, they are going to the box. And so we have a two minute jam because they were lead. Which is always the worst situation when you are on the, on the track, like, well, nobody knows what's going, to, what's going to happen, how long this is going to last. It's also a pressure for the team who has the power jam because that is a golden opportunity. They and have to play full offense and they have to take advantage of it. And if they don't, they start to Yeah, um, and that's the pressure, again. you know, when you're, you're trying. And they are trying right now with uh, the 
the Vienna, uh, what's her, what's the number? Five, number five nine, nine, one. one. Uh, so Fleesby, who's been jamming quite often, and uh, they managed to get through the pack. Yeah, and so that means, but right now, they were only able to get one scoring pass through that 30-second power jam. So that means that Dame Veneno is able to come back in from the box and force their way. They're really muscling their way through that pack. It doesn't seem like they're relying on offense, but just their own raw skill, which is quite nice to see, but also... Um, uh, you would hope also that there would be some help for them. It kind of depends. If they don't need help, why give it to them? But And look who's going to the penalty box. Uh, it's the Vienna uh, Jammer. So both of them went to the penalty box during this jam. Wow, and it looks like number 8-1 <laughs> is also going to the penalty box, but unfortunately <laughs> overshoots it by half a track and has to come back to sit down. It, Toxic lady is laughing, but it's happened to all of us. I'm, I'm, I'm laughing because I've been there. Because so, you've uh, done it. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm feeling apathy. You don't know the, you know the venue. You are, you know, you barely got used to the track, the, the, the yeah. everything. They are our visiting team, so they, you know, yes. they had to come from uh, over the border to come into Belgium. So, but interesting thing is that Roller, Roller Derby Madrid, Madrid. This is the second time that they've been at Skate Around, um, which again I said earlier is a testament to how good the uh, tournament is organized and because of that teams want to come back because they enjoy it so much now look at our mini pack over here let's talk about that toxic what's very up very wonderful action of the two uh um, madrid blockers who were really yeah there were just two of them with three uh blockers from vienna and they were really managing to um prevent uh, the action uh, on their blockers. Ooh, what's Number going on? 86, Hawaii, was doing some excellent offense and then uh, went to the box for their efforts. Unfortunately, that's what we have right now. It's a bit of um, a merry go round with uh, boxers going in and out of the box. That sometimes happens. Yeah, because it's already uh, 15 minutes into the game and we have seen quite uh, the penalty box was not empty quite often uh, during these first 15 minutes and we do have a team timeout for the Vienna team. Do you know, uh, Dark Pistol, that these two teams have met before? No, I didn't. Tell me about it. <laughs> they met uh, in uh, 2015 on the 17th of October. That's a long time ago. It is a long It's almost 10 years. <laughs> oh, don't say that. <laughs> you know, it was pre-COVID. We were all innocent. <laughs> and uh, at the time, Madrid won with a score of 184. And Vienna scored 96, which is also an interesting score. It's not that much of a difference. Mm -hmm. It means that uh, both of the um, of the of the teams were of uh, you know a similar level um, so I'm really excited to see the score at this point La right now Madrid is leading with 63 points and Vienna is at 41 the last jam both teams scored four points each yeah and so now we have the end of this team timeout and the beginning of an uh, Official timeout, <laughs> it looks like, because we have our track ninjas, which were mentioned on the comments on the stream. If you are listening to us on the stream and watching the stream, I want to thank you very much for participating. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel Derby Livestream. If you are watching, you must be subscribing um, because that supports uh, the free live stream that you're getting today. Um, and it doesn't have to be free. You can also make a donation. That's also something you can do if you would like. Nobody's going to hate you if you do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I do strongly encourage you to if you can. Oh, unfortunately, I hear myself on the live stream because it looked like a toxic yeah, lady I was brought it up. And because I'm like, oh, you no, got I heard my voice. You got the screen, so I can't have a look at it, but I have a phone. I can have my own you screen can, you with can all the comments. You can also look at the comments, exactly. <laughs> it is possible. It Technology works. these days, wow. Exactly. So while we're also during an, another timeout, because it's still an, an official timeout after the team timeout, we can talk a bit about our sponsors. We have Wallonie Infrastructure et la Région Wallonne that gave an award to the league to be able to put on this tournament. So when I say award, that's actually like a government subsidy. So it's... Uh 
if I, I'm right. There I, was, there was I, something. I see the translation from the, the, the French. I can understand. No, I, there, there was something that uh, it was not just a regular subsidies, but there was some sort of competition. I think there oh, was something it was a competition? Like that. Oh, that's I great. didn't look um, into details, so I cannot tell you, you more about it, but it's really, really Namur. nice. Namur, good job. Yeah. Good and job the city on of Namur. Winning money, not just having people <laughs> give yeah. it to you. <laughs> and we have also the city of Namur, uh, which uh, hosts us in this wonderful hotel. Uh, Hole, which it's is beautiful. very nice. Even if the right floor now, is funny. The, the floor is funky, but uh, it's not a bad floor. We're always happy when the floor is flat. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah. And sturdy, because I've been to the Netherlands and it happens that when it was it bounces, bouncy no. and it was very weird because I was skating and then also being seasick, which is not a great combination. <laughs> That's a very odd combination. Yeah. That's like doing dirty on a boat or something. I did not enjoy my yeah, time no. there. And also we have our third sponsor, uh, who is um, uh, a shop for uh, for band aid and all medical equipment, which mm -hmm. unfortunately is quite needed in roller derby. Unfortunately, folks. we often need that. Yeah, uh, just little boo boos. Uh, I mean, we're not talking about major injuries, but you know. You'll see a lot of people on the track um, with, you know, an extra bit of support around their knee or their shoulder or on, you know, a little boo-boo they get on their finger because we get boo-boos on our fingers. And you also have people who have protection, mm -hmm. you know, additional protection for the chest. I used to have a, um, a teammate who had the one that was, you know, really plasticky, hard. very hard. It's called a turtle shell bra. A turtle shell turtle bra. Turtle shell bra. Yeah, those things really hurt if you try to block against them. Which is what I do uh, in my roller derby life. So, yeah, we, we probably don't want to encourage you wearing a turtle shell bra for derby. We like it when you're soft. <laughs> <laughs> and we have Tangirl and Fleasby jamming respectively for Madrid and for Vienna with the Spanish uh, jammer getting out first of the pack and taking the leader for this uh, 11th jam. And number eight one, Angie, was hit to the ground quite brutally by number eight two, the jammer. Um, I, I don't know why I can't seem to keep their, their names in my head, but that's November Payne. November Payne is actually quite a cool name, very Axel Rose. <laughs> And, and a very cool jammer, mm -hmm. uh, very strong and fast, which is a great combo that you uh, appreciate in a jammer. Yep, number 24 for ORG is at the back blocking against the Madrid jammer. It, they are out the other side of the track, so we can't see them very well, but we guarantee that if they're spending a lot of time over there, it's because the defense on both teams is amazing. And we have the number 66 10 girl who is doing their second scoring pass, uh, allowing a third. the third <laughs> one already. Oh, I'm so late. Oh, it's okay. I think uh, again uh, we the scoreboard had is, them uh, go. No, we had them go through the pack so fast that we didn't catch the first scoring pass, just the second one. So yeah, yeah. I'm just uh, using the scoreboard to cheat. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but it was the second one, right? This is this is the third one. Yeah, yeah. It was the on. second yeah. one before. Yeah, it was. Um, and uh, wow, the, the, the pack is it's really nice tripod, really nice uh, uh, flowing blockers uh, who are moving quite fast from one side of the track of the other. And what's going on? The, the Vienna jammer has taken off their cover. I think that's why we can't see them very well. And they're really trying to get through the Spanish wall that is really, really strong and really keeping keep, keep them out. Wow. They're very uh, strong and they're very organized. And you look at how fast they jump back to recycle the jammer. It's almost <laughs> quite defeating. And you saw the look on the jammer's face when they realized they were yeah. being recycled again. Not fun. Yeah, and also because the, the blocker recycled really, <laughs> really <laughs> meters quickly. away. Yeah, very enthusiastically. I do do that as well. It's very enthusiastic to recycle because the jammer. Because we're so proud of ourselves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially like, I didn't put any wheels outside of the track. I'm not out. I didn't fall. I'm good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I didn't go out. I didn't fall down. Yay. Now I get to recycle. And we have... Dame Veneno, Nenadza, sorry. I'm Dame Veneno, or is it Nenadza? It's number 88, eight, eight, which eight is, is Nenadza. 
who's uh, coming from Bushwick, and, just, and, and just, I don't know if you saw that, but that was one of the most beautiful offense defenses I've seen in a long time, where the Madrid wall was took the jammer to the outside with their offense and made a huge hallway into the inside. Yeah, you had half the track that was available for their jammer. Who Again, really took advantage of it. Look, and look, now we only have one. Nope two Vienna blockers on the track, so it looks like we are having another bit of a penalty spiral, but I'm sure they're going to be able to get out of it once they get back on the track. And it doesn't matter because number eight from Vienna, Torremoto, who is the um, uh, captain of the team, is doing a great job handling the jammer and trying to get their wall to reform around them. So that is a really good job by them. It gives a little bit more time then for the Vienna jammer um, is it November Payne? Is it the one that I always forget? That is trying to get through to make sure that they it's get some points. It's either November Ancient. Payne or Ancteon. Ancteon. Yeah. Ancteon. I, I'm assuming that that's how uh, we pronounce it. Hopefully, um, uh, you know, between Toxic Lady and me and our multiple languages, we should figure be able to figure out how to... Yeah, so, but if we don't, uh, we are sorry. <laughs> because yeah. we don't know sometimes. <laughs> We can't cover all the languages. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then sometimes you, know, you have different interpretation mm -hmm. <laughs> of the language. And we have the um, Ancheon, uh, actually, who has managed to get through uh, the pack. For their and scoring pass. Yes. And they have had to struggle for all of them, but they, again, right in front of Rise, were able to do some pretty footwork on their toe stops to get through. I really like that, especially on the outside here in this turn. We're kind of in the in between turn one and turn two. And um, as you know, for a jammer, getting out or through the pack in that turn is really hard. On yeah. the outside of the turn, not on the inside of the turn. The inside of the turn, that's fine, it's short. Yeah. The outside of the turn is 150 miles. But because, you know, it's not, it, it is more difficult sometimes blockers do not cover that area that carefully. And we have 91 points. We still have the Madrid team leading with Dame Veneno taking the lead uh, while Flisby is trying to get through the, oh, the, 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 the Madrid blockers yes. who are very actively and number Taking five, two, out. went back so fast and so actively that unfortunately, I believe, and inadvertently, they hit number 611 to the ground doing a direction penalty. Um, and so number 611 is able to get back in that wall and do some pretty powerful blocking. However, we have some skilled offense coming from the Madrid pivot who then gets their wall back together and is able to get some blocking together for Flisby. Then they get hit by our um, wonderful pivot number eight, Toremoto, who was doing some great offense as well. So there, it looks like there's a bit of back and forth here. Um, I wonder, right now we've got lots of scoring passes by both jammers. So I wonder if uh, Dame Veneno is going to call it off or not. I don't see their bench saying anything. No, so that's it what seems I was. to me that they're going to take advantage of everything. That's what I was thinking. There's, it's been several jams when the, the bench doesn't ask uh, the their jammer who has the lead to call it off. So I'm wondering, is it, you know, is it a, a strategy? Is it just that they don't, it doesn't matter much? They're still the Madrid team. It also teammates. depends if they had anybody in the box that they wanted to get out. Or, and and <laughs> if you look here, I mean, were it's, a lot. <laughs> it's a good time also to call off a jam. Even if they were already almost at two minutes, they call off the jam just in time to make sure that there are two blockers in the box and not one. Which is makes the difference to mm -hmm. have uh, the two blockers uh, back on the track or even one. And especially, uh, you know, for the Madrid blockers, they are very efficient, mm -hmm. very strong, very fast, and they do not let anybody idle mm -hmm. right look now. But 997 Paula has come out for the lead, but we have behind them number 591 Flisby, who is this amazing fast, fast, fast jammer who just goes through, chases them down, forces the call off. Madrid was able to get two points. And I'm sorry, it's number 311, so, or 313, so it's Pixie Fox. They both have very small, diminutive names. Yeah. It's just the names, <laughs> uh, not the skaters, because uh, Pixie Fox is able to get through like a fox. Well, it looks like Orange is going to take another team timeout. Um, maybe that's because they've finally gotten 
everybody out of the box, so they probably <laughs> want to have an actual full team timeout. No, it's a really good idea because it helps get everybody on the same page, kind of have a rest and then go on with the rest of the game because they still have 7 minutes 15 in this first half. Yeah, and we've seen quite a lot happen during the first uh, this first uh, half time. Let's have a look at the numbers. We have a um, fairly uh, lot of different jammers jamming for the Vienna team. And yeah, it looks like noticed. Vienna is using a lot of different jammers. I would have thought that they would try and find out who was working best and stick to them. But yeah, it looks like they're using Inkteon, Pixie Fox, Fizbee, November Pain. And then on um, the Madrid side, they're definitely going with Paola, and they're definitely going with Dame Veneno and Nenaza more often than not. They have used Tank Girl, but um, Tank Girl has only gone in twice in this first half. Yeah, and you both have Paola and Nenaza who have scored quite a lot of uh, points during a single jam. Whereas it's not clear on the Vienna team which jammer has the most I don't know. action. If, if Actually, as I'm looking oh, yeah. at these stats, it looks like it's number 591 to me, who is yeah. standing out. So that would be Fizby. Um, and I just really like the, the way number 313 jams, but number 313 um, had, didn't make any points on their jams. They, but they do have a really nice style. So yeah, because you can the, put the them back on the track if you want, just for me, because yeah. I like <laughs> <It's> <laughs> <case>. <laughs> but the Madrid blockers are really efficient. That's yes. Even if you are a good jammer, when you have that efficient of, a blo of blockers who are very mm -hmm. fast and also who do not let your uh, own blockers assist you properly, uh, mm -hmm. it is quite diffi difficult to make it through. Yeah, they actually do a really good job, from what I've seen, of being able to break up the opposing wall. And as I said in a couple of the jams, they're able to play defense and offense at the same time. And I really like that because that's not easy to do. But it's exactly what you need to do at a certain level of roller derby. 109 to 53 is still nothing to scoff at. It may be 2 to 1 in terms of a points ratio, but that doesn't mean that Vienna can't come back. This is only the first half. This is only, you know... The beginning, it's also getting used to the floor, getting used to the officiating because, um, you know, we've got an Austrian team, we've got a Spanish team, we have a crew who is international, but also international in that there are probably a lot of them from France, a lot of them from Belgium, a lot of them from the Netherlands, you know. Everybody has to people work that together. We yeah, you walk right in front of the camera. They're very good. <laughs> Congrats. <laughs> Yeah, this is the. F I think it's the first time that the Skaterman tournament takes place in uh, Tabora, in the sit in the center of Namur. That's actually in Namur. It's been in Floref. It's been uh, well. It wasn't in Plomco. We've never had it in Plomco. Oh but no, gosh, uh, <laughs> nobody wants that. It was but in Ame last year, yeah, which is technically in, in the Liège province. Yeah. So we are back definitely in the center of Namur, which is quite a big deal to have, you know, roller derby tournaments that take place in such uh, areas and such venues. So we are really appreciating the support of the city of Namur, who provides this uh, very nice venue. And we also thank the, the other sponsors, Walloni Infrastructure, and La Région Wallonne and also the bandage shop Qualias. Uh, we are back on the track for the last 7 and 15 seconds. I just wanted to mention really quick, we have about 84, 85 viewers on the stream. Get more viewers on the stream. Let's get 100 viewers. I think that would be great to have it during this game, especially. It's still yeah. early, but it shows that you're motivated. And so here we go with uh, the jam starts, and we have, an, um, who is it? It is number 666 Tank Girl, as we said, who had only had two jams, is now going in for their third jam for Madrid, who has gotten lean. And number 82, November Payne, who is now jamming for Vienna. Um, they are pushing through the back of that Madrid wall, as we said, very efficient and very strong. Uh, they don't seem to need to actually be holding on to, get to each other to stay together. That being said, Vienna also has some very strong blockers. They try to hold on to each other a bit more. That's good. That keeps their wall together. So number 666, even though they are on the scoring pass, and number 82 is only on their initial, number 666 had to fight for every point. Yeah, that was very nice to see the Vienna wall really uh, re not re reforming uh, a lot uh, in front of Tango, who really had the trouble to get uh, her first scoring pass. 
yet, but it looks like now we're on the second scoring pass. Number 666, Tank Girl, maybe a little tired. They're waiting for their uh, offense to come. Um, number 82 has gone through the pack and is still trying to get through on their initials. So they have taken off their helmet cover, and it looks like they might be looking for a star pass. Until they do, we're going to call this a star stash, although it's not really stashed because we're no longer allowed to hide the helmet cover. Number 666 still fighting at the back. Again, the captain number eight, number 247, really playing well, making sure that they stay sucked back, that they follow back on the jammer and they don't worry about just staying in their position, but actually suck back on the jammer and follow. Um, With an the offense. action of a 5-2, Bimbi Killer, who's the captain, who has uh, tried several times to uh, make an offense, but <laughs> the, the other blockers not having it and being very mindful of where, the, of where mm -hmm. Bimbi Killer was. And it looks like we've got a lot more blocker on blocker action right now. 247 on 8 1. That was a really good hit. I like seeing Bella Ciao, and I also like saying Bella Ciao. <laughs> um, Bella Ciao, Bella Ciao, <laughs> Bella Ciao, Ciao, Ciao. <laughs> With only uh, two blockers from the Vienna team on the <laughs> on the track right now, with wow, this is a spread. These are spreaded blockers everywhere right yeah. now, with the full blockers from the uh, Spanish team. I allowed team. to look at what the penalties look like, because it looks like we have a lot from Vienna. We even have the um, uh, Vienna jammer in the box. So as this is a power jam, we have the Madrid team who had, who did a really great job of clearing the inside by bunching everybody up onto the outside line. And then we have another wonderful and strategic offense by number 86. Unfortunately, it was illegal, but worth it to get their jammer through. Yeah. <laughs> I say worth it, worth it for me. Maybe not <laughs> worth it for them. Maybe not worth it for Well, especially when you bench. see how many penalties have been whistled since the start of jam. I can't wait to have a look at what is the state right now. Absolutely. Ooh, I'm nice apex interested. jump from the November 8 to November, November Pain. Good whom, job. Yeah. Because November Pain came in from the box, so they took advantage of that surprise element. While number 97, uh, our very own Paola, 997, sorry, yes, but still our very own Paola, uh, made it through for their scoring pass, their second scoring pass, and were able to call it. So they got their first scoring pass in a power jam, their second scoring pass after the initial pass of November Pain. Uh, it looks like Vienna is still trying to experiment, tr still trying to find themselves. Again, they're playing a lot of different jammers. November Pain didn't play a lot. They put November Pain in. Still showed them a lot of um, confidence, even after them being in the box. So that's really good. Uh, and it looks like Vienna actually may have a full pack. And that has helped them enough, because that means that number six, um, who is a new jammer for us. <laughs> we don't have even have We don't that even jam. have a number six on we don't our have roster. A, we don't. Let me have a look on the other roster that we have right there and they are it's but reckless spice reckless spice okay well you hello know, you can't reckless blame spice. us for knowing not knowing that but yes hello <laughs> and welcome to the game as a jammer thank you very much for your participation and look at the quick lead that you got the quick points that you've gotten and so let's see how this is going to go it looks like they're going to run the jam a bit uh it looks like nanatsa is fine with that and is going to take those points all day every day at the same time I'm, w I'm looking at number six, Reckless Spice, making it through the track quite a bit and, um, and looking at their bench going, okay, I guess I'll call it now. <laughs> I think uh, the, the, the strategy... Because I, I believe that it's... it's um, I believe they made the same amount of scoring passes. I don't think number six is really ready to jam, maybe. <laughs> or I don't think any of the people <laughs> are ready to jam. And I think that's why we have such a high turnover. Yeah. Because facing those Madrid blockers, it's it is hard. not an easy thing to mm -hmm. do. They are really fast. They are really strong. They, they do really... Uh, you know, ag aggressive offense, very efficient mm -hmm. and very strategically placed. Uh, but is, it is not a nice thing as, as a jammer or a blocker being hit all the time mm -hmm. on the track. And it can be quite demoralizing. You need to keep your energy and keep your uh, strength. And also, I don't know if you uh, noticed, but also the, the communication for the Madrid players is it, it's quite good. We can hear them even through our headphones yeah. uh, communicate <laughs> and yell at each other instructions. Toxic Lady, I want to share a little bit of a, uh, a, comment, a comment and a compliment that we got on the stream. It's a super boulot, boulot pour cette chaîne YouTube et de super commentaires. Let's go. Thank oh, that's you. That's very nice. 
Thank merci you very beaucoup. Much. On peut faire un remerciement en français pour ben, un commentaire oui, on en vous français. Remercie. Merci beaucoup. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But I was trying to keep keep it with the you know the teams that are on the track. But thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, but we're in Belgium, so we have to say thank you. Well. <laughs> <laughs> And don't hesitate to uh, share uh, the Derby live stream YouTube channel. It is a, a YouTube channel is provided from here from Namur and with very don't forget to subscribe as well yes yeah, subscribe share invite your friends to subscribe it is not and an easy thing and write comments make sure that you interact with the stream we are going to read your comments here on the air we want to hear what you think we want you to uh, be a part of the game with us it's like you're actually here with us and so we would love to uh, hear what you have to say about this stream so don't forget to do that I'm trying to see how it's many. We have less than two minutes less on than the two clock. Minutes. And that's, this is only the first half, although it's been a lot. Uh, the score is 133 to 60. That was an 8 7 jam um, for uh, Roller Derby Madrid, even though Vienna had lead. So I think, again, Vienna is still trying to find their skates, so to speak. Um, and uh, but I, uh, they're staying in the game. They're not giving up. Uh, Definitely not. Yes, se baisse pas les bras, as we say. <laughs> so. They're certainly not giving up. They're certainly taking the time to breathe uh, because it's been quite a hectic first half time. And uh, I don't know what's going on. I'm it's an it's official, official review. Uh, oh, okay. oh, is it an official review? I don't know because I can't see. I can't see. We have so many players in front of the screen. We can't see it. Uh, but uh, I'm looking over here. And from what I can tell, it must be an official review. Okay. It must be an official <laughs> review by Vienna in in. In my mind, from what Ooh, I'm sorry. seeing on the screen, that's what it means. Uh, yeah, that popping sound. So sorry. That was a toxic lady just slapping the mic with a pencil, of all things. <laughs> oh, yes, involuntarily, uh, uh, by accident. But I that's how sensitive and wonderful this yes. equipment is. So we have to be really... <laughs> Careful. Really careful. There, will, there won't be mic drop, and I'm sorry to make a, a mic pop. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was not bad, Toxic. I'm impressed. <laughs> There's no really, mic drop, about but it, there I was a mic pop. <laughs> oh, with a pencil. That was such a dad joke, but I loved it. <laughs> I really did. Okay. Yeah, that's all I can do in English. I can do you know, more elaborate dad puns, jokes, yeah, in, puns in, in, in yes. French, but in English, I have to resort to dad, to dad jokes. I, I, in French, I make unintentional jokes. I say things that apparently mean something else that I didn't know meant something else. <laughs> oh, that that French does that yes, to, because the to foreign speakers. Because in English we call it double entendre, because mm. you know there's no translation for that in English. It's a double entendre, by the way, if you want to hear it in English. <laughs> That's how we say it. We also say hors d'oeuvre and maitre d. All right, we've got a GM starting off, and it looks like our um, number nine two from Madrid, our friend Dama Veneno, has been able to get a lead jammer with number three one three Pixie Fox getting out just after them. Uh, ooh, uh, number five two comes into a block at the last second, Bambi Killer, and it was an. Excellent hit. Uh, it looks like there is a little bit dis of discussion about it, but it doesn't matter because what they were able to do by getting that block is prevent their opposing jammer from getting any points while Madrid was able to score three, even though both jammers were coming into the pack super fast. Thank you uh, to Jam Amsterdam to highly appreciate the live stream and the commentary. We are trying to do our best. Thank you so much. Don't forget to share. And we have the 997 uh, Paula who managed to make their way through the pack and take the lead again for Madrid. While we still have, is it November Pain, if it I'm is not mistaken? November Pain coming back for some more jam <laughs> punishments. Wow, and they are being blocked by absolutely everyone just in front of us. This time it's very easy to see. It's quite amazing yeah. to see. Is it? We have both walls that are inside of each other uh -huh. uh, in a consensual way. And, um, and number eight, two is then taking off of their helmet cover to try and go for a star But stash. That, yeah, and that was very good because it really everyone. distracted the Madrid blockers who went for the other ones and they kept uh, they yeah. kept the, the cover and they managed to make their initial pass. And number to make nine, a nine, seven pass. is also back for another scoring pass. 
November Payne was able to make it through for a scoring pass. Yes, that that's being said, one. it looks like four points were given, although I thought I saw a no pass, no penalty, but it's not my job to know those things, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's not your job today, to know that right now. I'm very, good, right. very bad at no pass, no penalty. Uh, but uh, it doesn't matter. They could have scored on that particular person before, and I just didn't see it. So it. Uh, and we are now in the intermission with Madrid leading uh, this game with 147 points, while Vienna has 65 points. What an interesting first half time. What do you think about it? Uh, I mean, I think it's really good. Look, we're still at about two to one. So um, that means that we've still got the... Uh, oh, there's Nasty speaking. So don't worry about Nasty. But so that means that we still have two teams that are really working very hard. The point differential hasn't changed very much. We have Vienna with lots and lots of different jammers, and we have uh, Nasty. We're live, and we have um, uh, Roller Derby Madrid, who is who seems to have found their groove, their rhythm. Um, and has the jammers that they like, and they're going to keep putting on. You know, they're going to keep putting on Paula. They're going to keep putting on Dame Venena, and uh, they're going to keep put, pull, putting on Venice. Uh, Nenaza. 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 Yeah, they're Nenaza. doing a great job about it. Mm -hmm. Let's come back live in a few seconds. Yep. Take a break. We'll see you soon. All right, we're back for the beginning of the second half of our second game at skate around number five, Madrid against uh, Vienna. I'm looking at the penalties right now for Madrid. It looks like we're in okay shape. Bambi Killer and Ica de Odin have quite a few penalties, but it's not really the danger zone yet. That would be five penalties. And then uh, we're, when looking at the Vienna side, it does look like they've been able to spread those penalties out amongst everyone. They're all sharing. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's perfect. Uh, we just have two play three players who uh, four players uh, didn't have any kind of penalties. But otherwise, uh, nothing with the five penalties uh, that we should be mindful of. We are going back to the track already. Uh, with still Madrid having led most, uh, well, all of the first uh, half time. Uh, except for the first gem. The first gem. <laughs> I, was, yeah, I was wondering about the first except, gem. Except for the first gem. So here we go. Get yourselves ready. And we're going to look at our two jammers that we have, which we have seen uh, throughout uh, the uh, first half. And that would be a number uh, eight, nine, uh, who is Nenatsa and November Payne. November pain number 982, who has taken off the pant, uh, sorry, the cover, but just to be able to stash it and get through the pack. Now Vienna's blockers are trying to uh, block Nenatsa in order to get through and uh, to avoid them getting too many points. Nenatsa started calling quite vehemently um, <laughs> from what I could see. I, I, I don't know that they were annoyed or just very excited or whatever, but they were calling with a lot of energy. <laughs> It definitely were. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you and welcome back to our stream. By the way, Roller Derby live stream uh, is really happy to have you as uh, one of their viewers, but we would also like you to subscribe and please do go ahead and comment and interact with, e with us. We would love to hear from you and, uh, and we'll read your comments on the air and maybe even answer your questions if you have any, especially if you have a question particularly about this coming jam, which number nine two, our own Dame Veneno has been able to um, get themselves sent off the track. So they did not earn a lead, even though they were out first. That means that their uh, penalty was right before, or maybe even at the same time that they earned lead. Which that means leads, yeah, that, that, that now uh, Anction uh, has taken uh, the lead. Uh, did Dami Veneno had take, took the lead before being sent to the penalty box? I don't remember. Do you? No, Dami Veneno did not get the lead from what I understood. Now, I heard a lot of whistles, so we're going to kind of have to wait and see. Nope, it looks like Anktion is being um, uh, noted as the lead jammer. So that means that Vienna is lead. Vienna has control. While uh, Dami Veneno comes out of the box, 
Uh, I'm glad that the skaters can't hear me because normally you're not supposed to tell <laughs> them. They're not supposed to Ooh. know. And we have a nice long bridge that the Madrid blockers, uh, which allow them to keep unction to actually made a scoring pass while Damiano Veneno comes back to the track and makes their, fi their uh, initial. initial pass. Yeah, we have one of the uh, <laughs> Madrid blockers who is in the box. So that means Anktion, having earned the points that they needed, goes ahead and calls off this jam, give, making it a 4-1 a jam. With a big uh, apex jump from uh, the Madrid uh, jammer, who manages to score, I can't see the fingers, One I think point. it's three or two? No, on oh no, two points. Yeah. They scored two points, so um, that must be due to communication between the jam ref and the outside pack ref. The outside pack refs are skating officials who are there to see everything that cannot be seen from the inside. As you can see, we have a lot of officials on the track, seven that are on skates, and they are there to watch absolutely everything going on while it, it's going on, as we are also trying to do. Now, we are watching our uh, number 313 from Vienna, who would be Pixie Fox, who they were a very successful jammer in the first half in comparison probably with some of the other jammers and number nine seven, 997 from Madrid, which would be Paola. I don't know if you saw this, but we had a, a bit of matrix blocking from uh, number eight, that's uh, Torrento, who, or Torremoto, who was able to uh, stay in bounds and recycle the jammer, quite impressive. We do have a piece of equipment on the track. <laughs> yeah, it was like, it this doesn't is seem to be bothering anybody. <laughs> so number 313, Pixie is going to call it off and uh, they are going to um, I believe earn some points for no they are not going to earn some points for their troubles um, because as we could see the two jammers were right next to each other as they came in it doesn't didn't look like Pixie was going to be able to score points before uh, the uh, before Paula did so and we have a ref that has uh, picked up the equipment and trying to find the owner uh, while well, the five seconds are being whistled we don't know yes please <laughs> it's an official timeout while the refs are trying to have the blockers being properly equipped thank you well, I just wanted to say I got a little shout out on the stream and I'm, it makes me so happy. Thank you so much, Piggy Stardust, for the little hi. I'm really uh, happy that you're here. D um, thank you for interacting on the stream. Make sure that you subscribe and, uh, and watch all the games. So now we have number 88, that would be Nenatsa, who is the Madrid jammer who has made it out and has lead jam, uh, lead jammer status. Right behind them, we have a star pass from Vienna's jammer to number 115. Panty breaker. Panty breaker, who has been a uh, pivot throughout the whole game, but I don't believe we've seen them actually take the star, which is too bad because if we look at the way that they pass on the inside, look quite skilled. Uh, I say that, but I don't know what I'm talking yeah. about. Again, I'm glad that we have those skating officials on the inside because uh, it, if in fact, it was a Breaker cutting. did yeah. cut on the inside and has to go sit in the box and think about what they did. <laughs> Is that in the role that we rule that you have to do that while you are sitting in the box? We have uh, <laughs> we have a Ed Nadza who comes back and does, uh, I think it's the first scoring pass. I and believe that's their second scoring pass. Is it the second? Yes, but it does look like even though we still have 115 in the box, the points that they earned while they were going through are still counted. So that would be two points. Yeah, I think they did the, the, uh, the apex jump after uh, actually um, already coming in front of two of the Madrid blockers. Exactly. So that means that they did still earn their two points. So that gives us a 4-2 a jam. So that means you were right. That was one scoring pass for Madrid and one scoring pass, even th though they're in the box, for the Vienna pivot. With lots of uh, fight for the pivot or the jammer line just before the jam starts. And we have, again, number 9-2, Dame Venen who takes the lead for Madrid while we have Penty Breaker who comes back from the penalty box uh, for Vienna and a first scoring pass for the Madrid team. Wow, that is a lot of really offensive actions so fast. I'm tr having trouble keeping. No, uh, I can understand. But the thing is, is that the offense, though, that's doing really great. What I like about Dame Veneno is Dame Veneno goes all the way to the inside, all the way to the outside, and then all the way to the inside again and just 
is, is bringing those blockers all the way from one side to the other. Eventually, they can't stay together as well. So it's quite clever of them to be able to do that. That being said, they're agile, they're strong, they're fast. Um, so, you know, I'm sure that the blockers are, are quite annoyed. <laughs> So now we are on a jam number six. With Paula jamming for Madrid and the Pixie Force jamming for Vienna. With, again, very fast, as you said, inside to outside uh, mm -hmm. movement from the jammers. And wow, when we have the Vienna uh, jammer, number 313. Pixie uh, Fox. Pixie Fox who takes, oh, and they are being sent to the penalty box for something that I didn't see. Something naughty, Toxic, something naughty. <laughs> and we still have Paula trying to make their way to the pack as well. And they just did, uh, therefore taking the lead. And they're in a power jam, so that means that we've got Madrid lining up for some sort of offense. Uh, it looks like it's somewhat coordinated, not necessarily very, very, but it doesn't matter. Sometimes just creating chaos can be enough to get your jammer through. Of course, they only have 30 seconds to try and get their jammer through as many times as possible. So it is a good idea to try and get as coordinated as they can. That being said, we do have um, them getting through and scoring and calling it off. Now, did they call it off while the jammer was still seated? Yes, of course they did. Yeah. Because that's a strategy. That's a way to make sure that they're going to be able to have a power start. Have a power start. Who doesn't hope. love a good power start? And uh, power starts are not my thing. <laughs> oh, really? I do like I'd them. I'd rather just score all the points. As a jammer and as a blocker, I think it's always nice to have a, you know, a position. And then we have a very spread. Oh, okay. There, everybody's yeah, going back to the pivot out. line. Big, big blog of people with, yes, a very fast action of uh, uh, It's a pretty good blocking by 611 there, Num uh, number 611 Sabotage. Um, I've noticed that they are also quite active, trying to make sure they're always in the right place at the right time, so they're doing a good job at, at, at doing that. And if I'm not mistaken, it's the first time that we see NG and number 801 jamming for Madrid. Am I being mistaken? Yes. Uh, we haven't seen them. You know, Number jamming. eight one, Angie has not jammed, so that is the first time. Um, and that being said, we do have a Madrid blocker going to the box. So they're going to start with a three wall instead of a four. Looks like Madrid's bench is trying to make sure that their line is set up. Um, and it, I mean, we do have two blockers on the track, so that's good enough. We're kind of, um, yeah, we're waiting to see, but it looks like the bench from Vienna decided to take a team timeout, and it was uh, just in time, I believe, for Madrid because they hadn't really prepared their line yet. So I'm just giving you that from my view from here. I could be completely wrong. Don't take my word for it. I like being wrong as well. Also, I don't know if you're looking at this, but instead of uh, a, a two to one ratio, it looks like um, Madrid, uh, it looks like Vienna is kind of coming back up just a, a tiny little bit. Yeah, I was yeah. about to say, can we make a shout out oh, to yeah. our NSO and SO today? From the NSO, we have Lamesh, G.I. Joanna, L. Bones, Tyrion Quadista, OU, Spaddy, Mimi First, Alex, Jen, Jens Hutger, Jens, Jens Hutger, mm -hmm. Mo Mojo Jojont, or Mojo Jojont, I don't know, <laughs> Belzebut, and Corinne. And for our, our um, skating official crew, we have Miko, Direwolf, Victoria Veles Velociraptor, Chuck, Baff, Funch Tuffelstern, Super Tanker, Lil Monster, and Slow Foxes are our alternates. Thank you for all our uh, non skating and skating officials for making roller derby happen while we have the number 88, Nenazza, who takes the lead from Madrid entering this. Eight jam already of the mm -hmm. second half time. But number one nine, Anktion gets out quite quickly behind them. Anktion has been doing double duty playing both jammer and pivot in this game. So um, it looks like they're, you know, kind of trying to see how they're going to play um, their jammer rotation. Uh, I, 
I can tell you just by looking at Anxion, I feel like Anxion can do anything, including maybe even like lift a house over their head. <laughs> They're very strong looking. Their back muscles are amazing. So anyways, I like back muscles and I also like gushing over roller derby players. <laughs> Please forgive me. And we have Vienna, the Vienna blockers who manage a very strategic tactic and go uh, in front of uh, the pack, which allows their uh, jammer Who's that? Fizzbee. Fizzbee, who take, she took the lead and makes Dame her Veneno. first scoring pass. Well, we'll still have Dame Veneno behind. Oh, wow. That was some great blocking by number 247, Bella Ciao. Bella Ciao, I mentioned them before. They're great forwards or backwards. Um, uh, I shouldn't have said anything because at that moment, Bella Ciao fell. <laughs> And we yeah, have more curse. score points by Madrid, uh, <laughs> who made three scoring pass and two by Vienna, even though Vienna had the lead, which leads to the score of 77 for Vienna and 174 for Madrid. Okay, so it looks like uh, I'm looking on the stream. We haven't don't have any more interactions from you. Please feel free to uh, type what you're thinking, what Just you're seeing. Just say I stuff, would love, please. Yeah, I would love to talk to you. Uh, now we have the beginning of our next jam coming, and it looks like our uh, number 997, Paola, is fighting their way through the front, trying to get through. It looks like Vienna now was able to take advantage of the chaos and become and get their own jammer. That would be P uh, Pixie Fox out first. Pixie Fox is actually quite foxy in that they are able to sneak through. Um, I, I don't think it has anything to do with their size, but everything to do with their agility and uh, just their vision. And uh, that has gotten them a scoring pass with this uh, very nice. Uh, footwork on the outside. Um, while we're doing that, we've got Paula who is still trying to make it through this wall after getting a great offense from number 5-2 from Madrid Bambi Killer, who I mentioned before, um, doing some real precision offense. Now coming to the front, guiding the wall. I mean, they're everywhere doing everything. And everybody yells for Pixie uh, <laughs> Breaker to call it, uh, which they did after two scoring pass. Nice uh, points for Vienna, 85 and 178 for Madrid. It, it looks like Vienna is slowly crawling their way back up. It's a differentials game, as we said before, and, and that being um, the case with all uh, games because the <laughs> the team with the, the highest differential, you know, the highest score will always win. And we have some orangey. Is that for orange, Team Orange? I don't know no, how to put it No, that's for number out. 24, number 24 Org from Vienna. Ah. Shout out to number 24. And you know what? I agree with you. I, I did see number 24 playing really well, and uh, at, along with number 247. Um, uh, both of them, I actually get confused because they both have the 24 on there. So we have uh, the Vienna Jammer who has done a star pass while number 88 Vinatza is behind the wall trying to score all the points before uh, the um, number 8 Torremoto. Uh, Torimoto, the captain, is able to make it through and score any points. Now, it looks like Madrid is probably going to try and run this jam on that particular um, uh, pivot. Uh, again, it is a strategy. If you think that you will be able to score a lot of points if the pivot doesn't score as many, then you can just go ahead and do that and kind of circulate your way through um, a multi-pass jam, which seems to be the case right now. We've got eight points so far for Roller Derby Madrid. And only uh, and zero points uh, after the star pass. So the star pass did earn them their initial pass, but they hadn't earned any points yet. I'm going to look to see if they were able to get any on that passage, and they did indeed get four. Very nicely done, mm -hmm. of everybody. All right, number. It looks like we have another penalty. I'm hoping there'll be some time for us to be able to look at the at the penalties and see um, what goes on. We have the. Uh, I think we have an official timeout or something. Yeah, we're going to have an official timeout. And I'm going to use that time, actually, to show you the penalties. Please do uh, show me the penalties. Yeah, I'm going to show you the penalties. So let's take a look. Uh, so the penalties for um, Madrid, we can see that Ica de Odin has five penalties as well as Hawaii. So they're in a bit of trouble. Um, but just two of their players, it seems like in general, they have 
fewer penalties. Um, but then when we look at uh, Vienna, uh, yeah, it's only 1-1-1, and 1-1-1 is now sitting in the box, who has five penalties. They're, again, sharing the love. They're making sure <laughs> that all of the penalties are um, spread out are to spread out all the players. Everyone. Yeah. It's nice. I, I wish we could have you know, that kind of strategy. Yeah, absolutely. With Exxion and Dame Veneno jamming respectively uh, for Vienna and for Madrid. Dame Veneno thinking that they have a no pass, no penalty. Yeah. But they, they decided to not take the chance and they, were re they went back, allowed themselves to be recycled. And um, it believe that somebody is getting a high block penalty. And I believe it but is. Nobody is getting yeah, Dame that Veneno. Is Dame Veneno mm -hmm. who had trouble. Uh, maybe understanding that it was... That was against them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so that means that we have number one nine, um, as I Anxion. said. Anxion, um the super strong Vienna player who can do everything, apparently, who is now jamming as one of the primary jammers for But diffi uh, having, difficult, having difficulties to uh, withstand all the very efficient uh, uh, blocking from the Madrid player. Oh, with efficient blocking. I thought you said affectionate blocking. I was like, eh. <laughs> yeah, they're it's showing their love by blocking hard. Especially the blocker 1-1-2, Colerica and Sara, who was really not letting them having any moment, any opportunity to mm -hmm. score. While we have Dame Veneno, who comes back on the track, while Anktion still hasn't done their initial pass, if I'm not no, mistaken. No, has made it through their initial oh, pass. They they're did. currently doing a scoring pass. If they made it past at least one blocker, then they get the two box points. There is some points on the head of the, the yeah. referee. It's three or four. It's three. Okay. <laughs> so they managed to do a scoring pass, and none for Madrid. All right, so I'm um, looking and I don't see any more interaction, but don't forget to interact. You could totally shout out all of the skaters that you love on the track. We'll, we'll give them a little bit more love as well. And uh, just tell us what you think, how you feel, what you ate for breakfast this morning. No, don't tell us that, but you can if you want, actually. <laughs> actually, I don't see any problem with that, but I may not talk about it on the stream. <laughs> but I encourage you to talk about it amongst yourselves. There's no problem with that. We are 13 minutes and 50 seconds away from the end of this game. We're going to take a little bit of a look at the uh, jammer stats for our uh, Madrid and Vienna teams. It looks like there has been a big change in Vienna in what jammers they're using, but it's still a variety. Yeah, I mean they're they're trying everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it does, you know. We still have three, one, three. We can still notice that uh, um, the blocking of the Vienna team has ma has really withstood the uh, attack of the, the the Madrid jammer because mm -hmm. the jammers on the Madrid side are not scoring as high as they used to on the first half time. Well, if calling you look enough. also at the points, we've got forty points scored by uh, Madrid in this half. And uh, just under 30 points scored yeah, by so Vienna. They're, they're really That's really close. Yeah, they even out uh, during for the, f the uh, for the second half time, and uh, they find a, a nicer balance and not to be overwhelmed as much. Absolutely. So it looks like we still have a bit of an official timeout. And during that official timeout, we're going to take the opportunity to again mention our sponsors. That's the Wallonie Infrastructure and La Région Wallonne. La ville de, la, de Namur et Calias, on vous remercie infiniment pour votre soutien. Uh, N'hésitez pas à le répéter pour l'avenir. Hein? <laughs> Have you, I don't know if you've seen how nice the logo from the Vienna Roller Derby team is, and it's based it on looks a true like person. Exion. Yeah, it's supposed on the true person, uh, a trapeze artist and strong woman, Lavery C. Cooper, Lavery C. Cooper, uh, who is known as Charmion, who lived from 1875 to 1949. Oh, wow. And sh so she has this um, posture, uh, much like uh, the American you can do it. Exactly. Uh, women. And way before. Of the war era. Well, we have Paula uh, taking the lead for Madrid, but followed very closely by Fleasby. We love, I love some jammer on jammer action. Oh, so do I. And they are coming into the pack fast and together, seeing if they can both get the amount of points that they want. Even though 997 is lead, they are deciding not to call it off. This is going to be a race to the finish. Number 591 coming straight behind. They want to make sure that they can get more and more points. They do that by jumping the apex and calling it off right away. And then I think 
No, not yet. I was sorry. I got excited. I thought that they reached 100 points, uh, but they haven't. Uh, 96 for Vienna and 197 for Madrid. It's as excellent, and I'd like to see just in in my opinion, I'd like to see them all sort of um, working a little bit more on their uh, defense. I see a lot of offense actually. It seems to be a a concentration on offense. Everybody wants to get their jammer out first, and that's why we have those uh, those jammer races. Oh, and now we have Pixie Fox. Pixie Fox being one of the most successful jammers for Vienna, number 313, who makes it out for lead. I believe they're getting most of their leads. So they yeah. have a high lead percentage. They're coming back into the back of the pack, trying to get make the, make sure that they get a score. Number nine, uh, number five, two, does great blocking to get in the way, but is unable to stop the force that is Pixie Fox. So they do score their point, but not until number eight one. So that would be, is that number eight one? It's Angie is uh, jamming for and number uh, eight Derby. Number Angie. Yeah, yeah, for Madrid. Who is, um, yeah. Who jammed just a few times uh, they, they for Madrid. They jammed once before. Yeah. While the pivot is being uh, from Vienna is being sent to the penalty box, and both jammers having managed to score four points each, 201 for Madrid and 100 for Vienna. So we have passed the one century mark for Vienna and the two century mark for Madrid in that one jam. Yeah, even though there's a hundred points difference, I feel like, like the 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 quality of the game and the it's getting better now. Yeah, yeah. it's very nice. Yep, and it looks like the jammers are really, really wanting it. Um, it looks like we have uh, November Payne playing for Vienna, going through a, a really hardcore wall. I like that number 9-3 from Vienna. Sorry, number 3-3 three, three from Vienna. Lethal Kath, who is uh, doing a really good job bracing, making sure that their wall stays intact. And in order to do that, um, they start to bridge out as number 8-2 November Payne takes off the star and is able to eventually get through to the front We had some very nice. Pass. We had some very nice action of Bella Chao, number 247 on the Vienna uh, team, team who, uh, you know, who helps quite a lot um, recycle the jammer at the, at the end of the track and communicating inside of the pack. We have an official review being asked by the uh, Madrid team, the black team. Yeah, I like to try and give out some shout outs to some of the blockers that I've been watching that have been doing some really good work on this track because we talk about the jammers all the time. And so I think it bears repeating that, yeah, number 247, one of the reasons that we've been saying Bella Chao often is not just because we like saying it, because it is fun, uh, but also because that's a skater that has been doing a great job. Um, it looks like uh, we also have a Pixie fan, and, and I Pixie. am also a Pixie <laughs> fan, so Marisa. Yeah. Uh, Marisa, I am not going to try and butcher your last name. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. Uh, I, I refuse. I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Tiffantalo. Oh, there you go. That's very oh, good. That okay. doesn't sound butchered at all. But yeah, <laughs> you're a Pixie fan. I am a Pixie fan. Pixie Fox is doing an excellent job in their role as Jammer. It is their principal role. Um, from what I can tell, number 313 for Vienna is more successful than their cohort. Yeah. That's my overall impression. And if I look at it, yeah, Pixie is able to get lead. Pixie is able to score points or have more than one scoring pass. Uh, in the first half, that was also the case. Number 313 was better than their cohorts. Or um, somewhat the same. Not necessarily, necessarily. Yeah, no, we, we still have five, November, nine, is it November, November Payne? November Payne. Who was uh, no, 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 no. We are no, mistaken. but Fisby is also great. And um, yeah, Marisa, you're happy that they made it to 100. We're happy that they made it to 100. We love it whenever a team can make it over that century mark. Uh, it also means that points are being scored, and uh, the more points that are being scored, the more action there is on the track, the more fun it is for us to watch and to comment. Uh, so yeah, don't hesitate to send us your little shout outs and, and talk about what you'd like to talk about. I'd like to send a shout out again to our non-skating officials and skating officials. Uh, we currently have an official review on the track. Um, unfortunately, we don't know what that's about because uh, we forgot to send somebody in to see. Um, I'm going to see if I can't flag down some friends. I don't know. <laughs> to go and check for me. And I did it. I successfully did it. So I'll probably have that information for you. Yeah. Or maybe not. Or maybe <laughs> not. We'll see. It seems 
it seems that it's back on the game. Maybe we have our beloved Nasty Moves, who's trying to gather information and is running to yes. give us the commitment from Nasty Moves. While we okay. have Axion. So the no call stands, so that means ah. that the official review was lost. That's good. So number 92, that is our. Dame own. Veneno. Dame Veneno. Main jammer from Madrid. They are uh, running, a, you know, a normal rotation. Anction, new jammer for Vienna, are running a not so normal rotation because I also also see them blocking on the track. Uh, they've been able to uh, make it through and force the call off by Dam Dame Veneno. Dame Veneno also did get four points on that scoring pass. I'm mesmerized and I know, I'm cold. I'm, I had to <laughs> wake. <laughs> yes. I just just now had to wake Toxic Lady back yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they were off in another world. <laughs> it's coffee time. It is yes. ten minutes left on the clock, and I was looking at this the scoreboard, not moving a lot during, during the last jams. We have some sure reviews and timeouts, sure, uh, but it's it's not a stand still. But it's not easy to uh, you know to uh, get some more points. We have very strong and very uh, speedy uh, tripods from mm -hmm. one uh, side of the track and the other with Vienna Flisby taking the lead. Yeah, in that wall that was led by Lethal Cow doing a great job. I want to give a shout out to them. And of course, now we have the Madrid jammer, number 997, Paula, who was able to take off their star stash it but still in a visible way to be able to get through. While Flisby is scoring their points, considering when to call, calls it right before the jammer makes impact with the wall as to avoid any opposing points. That makes it a 4-0 jam, which is what they like to see on the bench. That makes it 209-104. And we have nobody sitting in the penalty box. Is it me or are we seeing less penalties being whistled during this second half time? Maybe the skating officials are tired and they don't want to call penalties anymore. Well, I can no, I understand so. being tired because <laughs> I am tired as well right now. While the skaters cannot afford to be tired with Nenenza wow, and Pixie look at Fox. Nenenza running wow. on their toe stops on the outside like a sprinter in the and Olympic 24 games. OG who Ooh. really managed to uh, try to block them really far away at the end of the pack. Well, we have uh, a v well, that OG being sent to the penalty box for I don't know what exactly. And the number five two, uh, a Bambi killer was is doing some excellent blocking. Uh, I I'm actually surprised that that Pixie uh, didn't get hurt with and some of that blocking. Yeah. But they are going to the box. So and seeing that Nanza calls it off to have the next jammer taking advantage of having a. Power jam, one jammer and one blocker from the Vienna team sitting in the penalty box right now. I jinxed them. I think I should not have said you did, anything. You did I'm say, sorry. You did say that there were not as many penalties. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the problem. We definitely have a jammer curse problem. We need to work on it. I mean, it, it's hard, though, because it, we're also trying to give you our impression of what we're seeing on the track, and we're going to continue to do that while we see the offense breaking through that Vienna wall and um, getting number 9-2 through. That being said, there was some excellent blocking, again, by Bella Ciao, number 247, and if they had not fallen, um, they would have been able to block uh, number 9-2. Now, number 9-2 was able to make it through, but because they didn't legally pass number 247, ah, that's the thing. Then they are not lead jammer. Lead is still open. Lead is still open, and that means that our Pixie Fox, who is now coming back onto the track from the box, is eligible to become lead. So we'll kind of see what happens here. Uh, They're you know. being recycled at the end of the pack very efficiently. And the number eight, yeah. six, Hawaii from the Madrid team, who has been doing some really nice blocking. Excellent blocking. Yeah. Lots of good blocking from all the blockers from, all from of the, them. the Madrid team. We have shout out to uh, that very one. efficient communication and efficient blocking. And just so you know, if we didn't shout out you as a blocker, it's probably just because we couldn't see your number. That's because you are in reason. the middle of everything yeah. because you are doing your job very, very well. Yeah, exactly. 
So number nine, two going through for another scoring pass. Again, they're not lead, so they can't do anything. They just have to keep going through, keep skating. It's not bothering them because they are scoring. But that means <laughs> they seem that to be a bit tired, though. <laughs> they just skate in front of us. And they, they, they did. They did have a winded look on their face. Yeah, but face. the way they managed to uh, keep their energy as soon and pick pick it up as soon as they come into the park. It's quite Unfortunately, nice it didn't to see. work out for them because oh. they did pick up that energy and <laughs> a back block penalty. So they will be going to the box and that gives a power jam to Pixie Fox. Again, Pixie Fox is still eligible to get lead. Uh, unfortunately, number two four is doing something that Pixie Fox does not like. I saw the eye roll, number two four. I just want you to know, <laughs> ORG, Pixie Fox <laughs> didn't like that you kept going back because you were recycling them as well. Yeah, that was, I, I, I was like, stop making the pack go back. Everybody I don't stop like rolling. To, <laughs> I don't like to criticize skaters. You do you, but I just want to advocate for Pixie Fox because I saw their well, eye Roll. There's five <laughs> minutes left on the on, on the clock, so it's understandable that at some points the you know that the, the the blockers they wanted to prevent uh, the Madrid blockers from just being alone to block Pixie Fox, uh, but it's kind of difficult to have their eye on everything. It's been almost an hour uh, of the game right now, uh, so we can understand that not everybody has did you see everything. The score in that last jam, it was twenty to zero. Yes, I did see that. I did see that. Twenty to zero. Yeah. Uh, and hurts. no lead, ha no lead beautiful. has been taken during the last. No, jam. there was zero lead as well. Yeah, and and uh, and each of the jammers was in the box. Actually, we have number nine two, the one who just Dame Veneno, who just scored twenty points. Sorry, sixteen. 16 points. Now the reason, yeah, the reason it hasn't it's 16 changed. is because the the um, their jam raft has to put those four points back in their pocket. I think until they come back out. Uh, no, they shouldn't have. No. So apparently it was only 16 points. <laughs> and we have and that Frisbee. Still a lot. And Dame Veneno jamming for Vienna and Madrid. And it is the Vienna jammer who takes the lead. Well, we still have Dame Veneno fighting their way. Very Colab yeah, Coleri Casara did a great offense for their jammer to get them out. And the first Frisbee scoring pass scoring. for Frisbee. Yes, uh, very active. Uh, help, very, oh, I can't speak English anymore, but very actively and successfully held by their blockers. Very good job by number 115, Panty Breaker of Vienna, also being able to hit and recycle the jammer, get back into their wall, get back on the track, and make sure that they continue to do defense effectively. Number 9-2 maybe a little tired i don't know it's a possibility given you know all of the scoring passes that they just did earlier um and so yeah and what i love again is the love between jammer and blocker when they come up against a good wall <laughs> they give them props that's the wonder of roller derby is that we all give props to each other like oh that hurts Oh, you're so good. You're so annoying. Yeah, and this, then we this give is each the best props. compliment. You know, when you have people who said you are so annoying, that is the best compliment that, you know, a jammer can give to a blocker. Oh, yeah, we have 97 spectators at the end of this game. Look, this game is cool. There's only three minutes left, but let's see if we can get a few more uh, spectators. We would love to be up to 100 on our live stream. We have... Uh, what's going on? The referee has something to say. I don't know. Oh yeah, we have uh, we have the official the NSOs who are also uh, checking with the. Um, I don't know what is it the about. The inside, I believe. Is it for penalties? No, nobody is going to sit in the penalty box. All right, we let somebody out of prison. <laughs> <laughs> they got jailbreaked. <laughs> it's always nice. <clears throat> Full crews of uh, blockers on the track. Oh, I think we may have a foul out. I can't tell you yet, but I will tell you as soon as we finish. And uh, number 997 got a cut penalty. So we have a power jam for Vienna here at the end of this game. Very exciting. It is number 82, November Payne, dancing on the outside line. Just makes it through. Yeah. I love those little dances and, on the outside and line. And the blockers very strategically, uh, because seeing that the band Madrid the blockers were not bridging, stayed to provoke the no pack, which allowed, you know, November Payne to get rid of the last blockers who were blocking their way. Number 247 did something that I really love in terms of a, a power jam offense, which is just to look scary and shake your shoulders. <laughs> very good. <laughs> very, very good. I have to try this out. Never yeah, uh, you can even scream. I um, do do that. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so it looks like we have gotten our jammer out of the box. Number 997, Dami uh, Paula, has made it through for their initial pass. So November Payne's going to go ahead and call it since they've gotten their points. Yes. All four of them. Yeah, four points being scored by Vienna. 116 points, 232 and two minutes and 20 seconds on the clock. Are you going to see the penalties? Yeah, I'm going to try really quick. It was Madrid. We thought we saw um, Ija de Odin yeah, leaving. And that is exactly what happened. So we had Ija de Odin who actually did foul out. Um, Less than five minutes at the end of the that game. Happens. So it's they're not a bad player or anything. They're just an active player. And so they got a lot of uh, penalties from being too awesome. That we sometimes. have the Vienna jammer being sent to the penalty box, which leaves Nenadza, the sole jammer, on the track. Lead. They are now lead jammer, and the pivot is being recycled in order to bring the pack. It, Madrid is bringing the pack back to make the track shorter for Nenitza so that they can score points. So they scored the point in the back by getting that goat, which I love. And something fell off the track and everybody's yelling something, but I don't know what this thing is. Have you seen that? Yes, well, I've seen parts <laughs> of um, the protection coming off of a lot of the players. I believe that um, what they need to do is cover their oh, um, yeah, that's protection. The, yeah. So if it's not white, so they doesn't stain the, it, yeah. the floor. Okay, so it's not something that is absolutely legal equipment, and they can still keep on skating. Yeah, well, I I, I would hope so. You know, as long <laughs> as it's not in the middle of the track, uh, then nobody can fall over fall over it. That being said, it's possible they could fall over these little bits on the outside. Um, the uh, Nobody's speaking. Okay, somebody is picking yeah. up this thing. <laughs> the skating officials could fall, fall over it. So yeah, we were very worried. <laughs> we're very worried about everybody. Please pick the trash up. First of all, for safety. Second of all, because it doesn't look good on our stream. <laughs> Must stop it. So now we are at two thirty-nine to one sixteen. That was a seven-zero jam. We've got a timeout. Official a, timeout. The official timeout. Oh, Twenty-three seconds 23 on the seconds clock. Left. <laughs> Is this an, a strategic okay. official timeout? No, of course <laughs> not. Of course not. How can you be strategic when you're referee? No, if roller, roller Derby Madrid is the only one with timeouts left, and so they could have called one but wouldn't want to. It would have been Vienna who would have wanted an extra jam. That being said, Ooh. number 9-2. Ooh, dame veneno. So fast. Oh, my gosh. So yeah. fast. So good at juking. Makes it out. Lead <laughs> jammer. Number 591, our own Fisby. Our favorite, one of our favorites, actually. I like 313 as well. Uh, but Fisby is not able to make it out, is getting recycled. Oh, and uh, cr there's created a no-pack situation. And I'm hearing the no-pack just very, very clearly. So I have a feeling that um, uh, Dire Wolf is going to give a uh, destruction to somebody. And that being said, <laughs> we have the end of the jam. That was the end of the jam and at the end of the game. It was 4-0 for Madrid. Um, and uh, we are just waiting now for the official score, unofficial being 243 to 116. But let's have a look at the points that you know they had when they met in 2015. It was Madrid who won uh, with 184 points and Vienna had 96. So if you look at the points differential, it, we are still in the same ratio. Not exactly the same, more than 100. Uh, but not crazy more than that. Yeah. So it's still uh, very honorable of these two teams who uh, offered us a very exciting and offensive and very fast game to follow today. I love it. I think that um, I think they loved it as well. Everybody yeah. is smiling, and that is what we love to see. We saw a lot of derby love between two teams, adversaries still showing each other props. That's the best part of this. Uh, the score is final yeah. now: 243 to win for Madrid, and 116 for Vienna. Thank you very much for uh, joining us on game two of uh, edition five of Skate Around in Namur, Belgium. We're going to take a break and we will be back uh, for at the 4 PM. third game at 4 p.m. Central European time. Just so Madrid you know. is still going to be playing again, uh, but this time against Namur, who opened today by winning. Yes, they did. They won by quite a lot. I wish I could tell you the score, but I can't remember it. <laughs> it is right there. And oh, they yes, won. 188. 
it to 77. Yes. I spoke at that particular one as well, and I also took the stats, so my brain, <laughs> not great. So we are going also to take a break and for our brains. Uh, thank you, Doc Pistol, for commenting these two first games. No problem. I've been doc, uh, Toxic Lady. You've been, doc, I've been... I've been Toxic Lady. You've been Dark Pistol. Yeah, basically. and we need coffee, yeah, both we of need, us. We both need coffee. So let's get coffee, and we see you at four. Thank you for following. Don't forget to share on social media and to follow us back in uh, 40 minutes now.